Hi, I'm Anton Jackson from Bellwether's Academic and Program Strategy Team. This is the latest in our video series following leaders across the country who found creative solutions to address teacher staffing challenges. Today, we're talking with Felicia Butts, the Director of Teacher Pathways at Chicago Public Schools. Felicia leads the teacher pipeline work, which includes the teacher residency program, one of the largest in the country, and efforts to recruit CPS's all own students to become teachers through the program we call Teach Chicago Tomorrow. Felicia has been generous with her time. Uh, she was part of the initial set of interviews conducted to mine talent trends across CPS. And then she allowed us to share uh, the, re the resources from CPS to write a, 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 a um, case study about Roy Your Own Initiative that Chicago the schools implementing in their, in their district. Before we get into our conversation, I want to make sure everyone watching the video knows about our our toolkit. The toolkit shares uh, additional information strategies about how to recruit and retain talent. One of those is the 40 and structural model. Another is how to think about staffing effectively and creatively in challenging times. You can find more about this in our toolkit titled Creativity from Necessity. So Felicia, could you please talk to us about um, when Chicago Public School Design implemented the Grow Your Own Program, uh, Teach Chicago, can you first explain to folks listening to this who might not be familiar with the program and Grow Your Own, what is that program? So Teach Chicago is an umbrella initiative at Chicago Public Schools that um, includes a number of programs. And the two Grow Your Own programs that we operate are the Teacher Residency Program and Teach Chicago Tomorrow. And Teacher Residency is a program that is designed at CPS to primarily attract CPS parents, graduates, and employees who are not in teaching roles to become teachers as they're already very familiar with the school communities and have you know demonstrated a great level of commitment uh, to the school communities as well. By and large, our employee pool that we pull from, which is largely paraprofessionals, identify as people of color. And because the students at Chicago Public Schools identify as over 85% black and brown, uh, we know how important it is to rely on and draw from this pool of professionals that already have relationships with the students who can very directly reflect the experience culture uh, that they are having on an everyday basis. Teach Chicago Tomorrow, similarly, is designed to attract CPS grads into teaching roles at Chicago Public Schools, but it is a high school pipeline. Unlike the residency, which is non-traditional students, we're already adults, have gone to college already, have at least some college credit, Teach Chicago Tomorrow participants are recent graduates of high school, so ages 18 to 21. It puts them directly into college on a pathway to teaching as their first and hopefully long-term uh, career path. How did you design the program and who did you reach out to for staples to consult on the design of the program? So many stakeholders. And it is one of the most enjoyable parts of the process, in my opinion. I'm a, I'm a planner at heart. So when it comes to stakeholders and a program like Teach Chicago Tomorrow or Teacher Residency, uh, because we make a huge investment in the salaries that resident teachers receive, um, you got to talk to district stakeholders. So I have to talk to the chief talent officer, have to talk to various directors in my department uh, to get them on board even the CEO, you know, to get them on board uh, with a value proposition that says CPS as a district should be investing in this initiative in this way, and this is why. And then you have principals, because principals are welcoming resident teachers into their schools for their training here. We want to engage them in the process on how the program works, if there is a cost to principals to participate, and how principals can empower mentor teachers in their building to become trainers of the next generation of teachers which then leads us to teachers. All of the teachers at CPS um, are a stakeholder group that we wanna give great consideration to as we're thinking about what it takes to create a robust pipeline that's sustainable um, of teachers who are well-prepared to serve students. Now for me, I am a former teacher, although I always say once a teacher, always a teacher. Uh, I have a high respect and regard and awareness for the fact that I've been out of the classroom at this point longer than I was in it. And so it is extremely important for me uh, to rely on the expertise of those who are currently practicing to understand uh, what the landscape looks like 
and what their training was like in the most recent years and how we can make it the best possible for incoming teachers as well. So all the planning, logistics, the finances are in place. Um, I think folks want to hear about successes. Have you seen success and uh, have you closed gaps with the pipeline? Yeah, we have seen some success. Uh, CPS at large has seen the attraction and retention of Latinx teachers and Black teachers at record levels in the last two years. And the teacher residency has played a big part in that. Our cohorts identify as more than 70% people of color. And by comparison to our traditional student teaching population, it's a huge difference. Um, and aside from that, when it comes to teacher retention, just more broadly, we are just now coming to the point where we're able to see programs coming up on six years old on the teacher residency side, where we're able to see if there's an actual retention uh, point here. And we have retained more than 90% of teachers who completed the teacher residency at the five-year mark, which is really exciting because as we know, that's the, that's the burnout year. That's where you normally see the mass exit for those who aren't going to stay particularly for teachers of color. And so that's been amazing to see unfold as well. And what was that's, the amazing. That's, a, that's amazing though. That 90% retention rate is um, almost unheard of. Um, and the second, second thing you should be proud of, which you already know, is this idea of a diverse pipeline. You know, as there's a shortage of people of color in classrooms across the country, you to do that and um, have a pipeline of 70% uh, people of color is pretty impressive. Uh, I think it says a lot to your values and that and the success of that. Uh, I think the large other question was around was the gap closed? Like, did you close the teacher pipeline gap? Right. Um, and so ran kind of pre COVID. Now, uh, is the gap still being closed? It's it's a it's a gap in progress. I would say, while the teacher residency is certainly uh, an effective lever to pull in this effort to close you know, the teacher shortage gap and the teacher diversity gap, it is not a silver bullet. And so we're one of several strategies under the Teach Chicago umbrella, even beyond growing your own programs to attract and retain teachers across the district. That being said, while the teacher residency is building this beautiful pipeline, we do have other statistical factors at play that don't make it possible for the residency to single-handedly close that gap. We have to look at things like retirement rate, uh, we have to look at things like overall exit rate of teachers um, and overall recruitment rate of teachers. And the teacher residency brings in approximately 200 teachers per year, which is amazing, but it's not a large enough or high enough rate to close the gap with all of those other factors going on as well. So we haven't closed the gap, but we have contributed. And I do feel a bit about that. And so... In thinking about an organization or school system leaders who want to go this direction, right? Uh, as they think about grow your own, thinking about things you said around diversity, increasing the pipeline, and they want to basically um, take on this this new this challenge opportunity. What advice did you give them around starting a program like this? I'd say don't try to do it in a vacuum. Uh, I think that nationally, there's a trend. Many of us in the ed space are recognizing teacher residency as the way to go when it comes to, you know, building a long-term sustainable pipeline. There are a wide variety of residency programs operating very successfully across the country of various types, various sizes, various administration types. And I would strongly urge anyone who's thinking about doing this to draw on those programs. We're a very friendly community. Draw on those programs for advice, resources, documents, uh, structure, anything you can think of um, would definitely be helpful. And it's certainly something that helped us get up and running over five years ago, being a part of um, the National Center for Teacher Residencies Consortium was an amazing resource for us. Great advice. Thank you. So they shouldn't be afraid. It's, a, it, it's doable. It's manageable from your, but it is a lot of planning um, on the front end to make sure it works. Um, Felicia, thank you for your time. I appreciate you taking them out of your busy schedule, uh, supporting students and teachers in Chicago to join us. I want to thank everyone for joining this conversation who's watching this. You can read more 
detailed case studies about T Chicago and XSR, XR, our entire creativity from necessity toolkit um, using a QR code you'll see on the screen. And look for more videos coming soon at Spotlights, uh, great things across the country from educators and leaders in the field, help you recruit, hire, retain teachers um, for our kids that have great instructors in, in the classroom. Thank you for your time. Thank you.